My name is Kyle Tibbs, and I'm in uh, Pawnee, Oklahoma, at the home of Ronald Rice Jr. And I'm doing this for Native American art class and uh, for the Oklahoma State University Oral History Project. And uh, can I get you to tell us your name? Uh, Ronald James Rice Jr. And uh, <clears throat> where are you from? Uh, Pawnee, Oklahoma. And uh, what is your tribal background? Um, Three-fourths Pawnee, uh, fourth Pottawatomie, and uh, fourth Iowa. And uh, we're here today to talk about the importance and the significance of the drum and how and why it is so very important and sacred to the cultural continuity of Native Americans. And uh, the drum is also known as uh, the big drum or in movies in Hollywood it is also called uh, a war dance drum. And uh, I would just like to ask you, you know, what is the, the actual true meaning of the drum or the essence or where it comes from? Well, uh, <clears throat> you know, growing up we were told things about, you know, drum and and uh, they were referenced to, you know, a long time ago when, you know, we had to hunt for our food and, you know, and gather and things like that, you know, so and we uh, were told that there was a prayer that went along with with everything, you know, and a lot of times we we needed uh, animals for food and clothing and and then you know also a drum you know and then uh, so that prayer you know that's a, a big part of it because we want things to go good for us you know in, in the process so I uh, try to apply that you know to today you know in, in the process of uh, you know making a drum you know to you know incorporate prayers into you know our thoughts and and even uh, during, before and after the process. And uh, why is the drum so important as far as uh, coming from creation time up until now? And, uh, what has kind of changed and what hasn't changed as far as the way we use the drum, <clears throat> the way our people see the drum? Today, uh, it seems like there's more... Uh, uh, powwows and uh, I'd say uh, contest, you know. Uh, whereas in the past, you know, that it was more ceremonial use, and uh, you know, the our our tribe Pawnees, we have a, a visitation where our Wichita relatives they come up from from uh, down south and they stay up here, and then you know, at drum, it's the the focal point of our our doings and our our ceremonies are while they're here, you know, we have hand games and dances and then you know, there's all kinds of family songs and, you know, so uh, to me, to, you know, there's still things that go on like that, you know, in ceremonial dances, but then there's a lot of more, uh, I'd say, uh, where it's not just one tribe, you know, it's just a mix of, of all tribes, you know, like powwows and, and then, uh, it's even real competitive today, you know, there's contests and singing contests and lot, and there's big money in it too, you know, for, you know, our singers and stuff. <clears throat> so there, there is a big difference uh, between, you know, what you're going to be singing for and what the drum's going to be actually used for, but, you know, you, you, can, you know, a lot of times it can be used for all of that, you know, because that, that's part of that prayer, you know, that it's going to help or uh, make someone feel good, you know, and, and that's, uh, you know, what, what it's intended for, you know, to lift, lift spirits up, you know, it's got a good spirit in it, you know, and that's what our folks told us, you know, when you get around it, you know, we would, uh, we would refer to it like we were going to church, you know, and, uh, try to uh, dress, dress that way appropriately, you know, around it, and we even uh, referred to it as grandpa, you know, and, called it up it you know in Pawnee and uh, <clears throat> that's how we're supposed to treat it you know real respectable around like you was around your grandpa you know or an old man you know you, you know you want to be gentle with it you know but at the same time you know you want to you know just uh, give it your all while you're around it you know because there's that spirit in there and uh, you know when you really get to feeling that spirit it can uh, lift people up you know and maybe there's ones out there that uh, can't dance or 
you know, can't get up, they can't move around, or, you know, maybe they want to be out there, but that drum and then songs are going to lift them up, you know, and then at the same time, it's going to make those dancers move, and people are going to see that, and it's going to, you know, have a, a, like a ripple effect, you know, through the whole uh, area that surrounds it. Because that spirit inside it's going to come alive, you know. And uh, I would also like for you to talk about the, yeah, like the living spirit of the animal hide and the wood and all and, and all things that, you know, have a spirit and uh, talk about the belief and, uh, you know, how uh, the wholeness and the oneness with all of creation, you know, that the drum kind of represents. Yeah, that's a, <clears throat> basically, you know, what it is. It's a, it's a spirit and, you know, even though you know, we may have taken the, the animal's life for the hive, we still believe it's alive, you know, because of that spirit that it has, you know, and then it's got the the wood, you know, that's inside of it <clears throat> that was a living living thing at one time too, you know, has its own spirit, you know. So we, we believe that, you know, that it's still alive and that, you know, if you take real good care of it, it it's going to take you a lot of places, you know, it's going to take care of you, you know, it's going to keep you fed, and, you know. Just uh, you know, take care of you and take you to different places, places you never even believed that you would be at, you know. But it's how special, you know, that, that drum is and the spirit in it, you know, that that's how real it is. You know, we sometimes you don't know where it's gonna take you in your life, but it it'll take you a lot of different places, you know, or far away from home, you know, and meet different people and make acquaintances and friends, you know, and Learn, learn a lot from it. You know. I would also uh, like to ask you how uh, how did you get started making drums, or uh, what was your family influence, or did you have any relatives that also made drums? Yeah, I had a you know a couple different grandpas that made drums, and then I had some uh, uncles, you know, that made drums, and uh, <clears throat> what's uh. I guess you would say different about the way I learned is that uh, my uh, folks had, had all gone on that did make drums. So there wasn't a lot of uh, hands-on, I guess, that you could say they could pass on to me, you know, but seeing and uh, knowing, you know, what, what it, it's all about and all into it, you know, I uh, I always just wanted to make one, you know, from uh, for our group, you know, and then to do it myself, you know, I always thought it would be you know, awesome thing to do to construct one, you know, and then, so that's what I set out to do was to try to make a drum and uh, kind of just had to learn, you know, on my own, aside from, uh, you know, the things that I picked up from different ones that had made a drum, you know, but, uh, yeah, I just kind of, I guess might say threw myself into it, you know, and then, uh, worked out the kinks as I as I learned, you know, kind of showed myself, you know. But that's how much uh, uh, belief I have in, in the drum growing up and what it's done for me and what I, you know, I wanted to learn from it, you know. So it took a couple of tries, but, after, you know, after I'd gone through the trials and the errors, you know, it, it came out real nice and learned a lot of patience and, you know, just different things about it and then even you know going into prayer you know and asking God for help with uh, you know not just the structure of it you know the designs and the having a calm uh, attitude about it and a, and a good attitude knowing that it was gonna might it, that it would no doubt affect people's lives you know later on down the road you know it wasn't just that day or the next day you know but maybe years to come you know that that, that spirit could uplift people, you know, and then not only that, but maybe my children might sit around it one day too, you know, and do the same thing for their folks or their tribe or their relatives. And, uh, what type of materials is usually, uh, incorporated in making a drum? Like, uh, what can they usually be made from as far as, like, what kind of wood or what kind of different hides can you use? Well, <clears throat> from what I've I've learned is that there's a 
you can use a lot of different materials. You can use different animal hides, you know, buffalo and uh, cow hide, horse hide, I heard, and uh, elk and deer. Just about any big game hide, I guess, that you could, you know, skin and de hair, you know, and stretch, and you should be able to make a germ out of it. And then even the materials, uh, I've heard of different ones using metal rings, you know for the cylinder, you know, and then some people use wood planks, you know, kind of like a, an apple barrel. Uh, back in the days they used apple barrels, you know, and tie drums around them. Or uh, metal pots, they cut the bottom off, you know, and they tie the drum around it. And, but nowadays, you know, there's all kinds of materials. I've uh, heard of a, or seen a plexiglass drum, a clear one. I might have been a uh, like a marching band bass drum or something like that that they tied up. But yeah, you can just about use anything that's going to be a solid enough, you know, circular drum ring, you know, and then any kind of animal hide. What what kind of material did you use on the last drum that, that you actually tied? Uh, the last drum that I made, I used a, like a ring, a plywood uh, ring, and then uh, uh, slats, kind of like the apple barrel concept, you know, but more up and down. And then we wrapped it in a paneling and then strips of hide around it. <clears throat> I guess there's even uh, ways where they <clears throat> they'll soak a, a flat piece of wood and then they'll bend it in a circle and let it'll dry out so that it's just one whole piece. And how do you normally have to prepare the hide and uh, the lace? Like, what's the process as far as, say, you get a hide and it has the hair on it and you want to get it ready to tie up a drum? Like, what what's kind of the process there that they, they have to kind of go through in order to... Well, if uh, you don't have to skin the animal then you just get the hide, you're going to uh, more than likely get it with, you know, the some of the remains on the inside and you're gonna have to uh, stretch it out and skin all the fat and everything from the inside down to the skin and skin it clean and then uh, there's two different methods that I've heard of. The one I used was using lye and, uh, and water and you soak that hair and uh, actually the whole thing you soak it in the lye and the water and then it takes a couple days and it loosens up the hair uh, the pores the lie does and then the hair will come out fall out you have to s scrape it all out too and then from there you just keep washing you know washing your raw hide until it's clean enough to work with but uh, the other process of it they use a I guess it's an older method is the charcoals they use uh, hot charcoals and then they'll roll the hide in that and I guess it takes the hair off it takes it out but still, no matter, no matter what, which way you go, you know, there's a lot of work in cleaning your own hide and de-hairing it. It's a lot uh, harder than it looks, <laughs> to say the least. And then dealing with the smell, the aroma, is uh, a lot to deal with, a lot to handle. And uh, is there any type of special tools or... Anything that you use as far as being able to cut the materials or just well, a lot of time and patience? Yeah, that and I mean a real good sharp knife and uh, a lot of, lot of, I guess, premeditating as far as measurements go, you know, because, you know, not all hides are the same and you don't, it's not like you have a, uh, you know, an outline to go by. Kind of just have to take your time, and then it's real flimsy. It's all wet and slippery, so it's it's kind of hard to work with. You know, you have to have a real sharp knife, and a steady hand. And as far as uh, your tribe, since you're Pawnee, like, how does uh, how does your tribe usually? 
use the drum? Do you guys have different dances, or what kind of ceremonies do you guys have? Just yeah, um, I, I touched on a little bit. We have the, our Wichita visitation. It's a Guskahara dance. And we uh, alternate, you know, one, we'll go down there one year, and then the next year they'll come up here in the camp, you know, for a week, and then we play hand game, and then we have a dance, you know, on the last day, and that, the big, the drum is a big part of that, and then uh, we have uh, other ceremonies in our tribe that we use the drum for, and uh, not only that, but we have a real big uh, celebration for our veterans here at Pawnee. And uh, been having that for quite some years now. And it's the it's the main thing of our uh, of our uh, of that dance is the drum, you know. Because uh, you know, I heard someone say, you know, without it, you know, there wouldn't be no dance, you know, and no dancers. And so it's the heartbeat of of our ceremonies and our dances. And it's the you know, and it's right in the center, you know. That's how you know that's where it sits for us. So it's the main the main piece. And then we also have uh, tail dances over here at, at our roundhouse here in Pawnee and uh, you know it, it's the same thing there you know we treat it with respect and uh, you know uh, we even um, feed our singers first you know that's just part of how much you know we respect them for coming to, to be around the drum and because we know if it weren't for the drum and the singers then we wouldn't be able to have no, no dances. And uh I'd also like to ask you, uh, how often do you make a drum? Do you do you usually make one uh, once a year? Do you usually make one in the springtime, or uh, when's the best time or to make a drum? Well, I'm sure that you know there's many different uh, answers for that. You know, and uh, you know myself, I don't I don't claim to to know everything about <clears throat> making drums. And, and you know even the reasons for why people do or when they do but you know myself I've uh, been told that you know that a lot of times they made drums in the winter time because of the smell you know dealing with the raw flesh and that it was easier to work with it because it was cold out and you know that smell wouldn't bother you so much you know, but um, nowadays you know you can acquire commercial hides and uh, there is no smell you know, so you can make them in the summertime or springtime and uh, whenever. And I, I would say, you know, it's a good idea, to, you know, to make a new one with the, maybe the start of a new season, you know. And then also, you know, I did, sometimes I uh, may not make a drum for a while, go uh, maybe even a year or two without making one and then maybe one year make two or three you know in the same month so it just varies you know I guess need you know demand sometimes people looking for drums and you know wanting one uh, wanting to buy one I guess you know or wanting to, to get one on some kind of a trade or something you know and, and then also you know maybe might need a new drum you know sometimes they just like anything, they get old, you know, and then <clears throat> maybe uh, have to repair it or, or, you know, fix a new one to use. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just depends on, I guess, the person and, you know, what they're making it for and what they're going to use it for and when they, they want to make it or if they have help or if they're going to be dealing with the, you know, raw hide that has the, you know, the guts on it and the flesh on the inside and the hair to deal with or, you know, if they're going to, you know, pick up a raw hide that's already been done, cleaned and ready to go. So, so for me, there, there is no real, I guess you could say, specific time of the year to make one, you know, just whenever it, it comes up or comes around, you know, it needs to be done. So do you think that, uh, like I'm a uh, Cheyenne, Southern Cheyenne, and our people, we say that the drum can gather power from uh, weather, kind of like a rainstorm, like in the springtime, or sometimes they say that's a good time to 
maybe make make something like that, you know, as far as using the animal hide, you know, and the spirit that's involved that goes into it. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. I mean, it, to me, it sounds real logical, you know, and, and then it's a good, it's good, you know, like a lot of things start start new, you know, in the springtime, you know. For us as Native Americans, you know, it's referred to as the end of New Year, you know, springtime, so. I mean, it, 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 to me, that goes, it goes right along with it, you know, the new start, you know, fresh, new beginnings, you know, and new prayers. And, uh, <clears throat> do you also think it's a uh, very important, because I've seen other tribes kind of have some classes on drum making or sometimes it's considered a it was considered a lost art there for a little while uh, a few years back but now it seems kind of like a cultural renaissance so to speak as far as a, a lot of native americans are getting more involved in their culture and it seems like there's not as many drum makers as far as it, i'm not saying it's a lost art but you know that you don't really meet it do you, do you think that as well, as far as knowing very many people that also tie up drums? Um, I'd say a few years back, you know, maybe, you know, I could, I would agree with you there, you know, because in that, all that I knew of was, you know, just a few people, you know, that made drums and maybe went about it, you know, the, the way that they did, you know, and had their procedures and, you know, whatever that they did that went into it. But now, Nowadays, you know, I think, I think there's more and more drum makers out there. I think it's, uh, you know, I'm not 100%, but I mean, it, with uh, technology, you know, it, it seems to be getting commercialized, you know, a lot. You know, and there's uh, a lot of different uh, internet places, you know, that you can buy a drum. And I see, to me, it's, uh, it's different, you know, that you can just go on there and buy a drum, you know, just like you were shopping at the store or something, you know, and, but whereas uh, when we were younger, you know, we, you know, we knew of somebody that made them, you know, that's where we was, well, you know, go down and see Grandpa and see if we could get a drum for, for our little drum group, you know, when we were younger, but, you know, nowadays it, it's just a mouse click, you know, on the internet, you can have one on, on, on its way in the mail, you know, so it's, uh, to me, it's a, uh, a lot different than it was you know but that that was the ideal I had was you know I wanted to make my own you know I didn't want to have to buy it from somebody or you know uh, I guess they would say order it online so to speak you know kind of wanted to have my thoughts and feelings in it you know and, you know so it's uh to me it's more commercialized nowadays you know just uh, but I, I think there's more uh, drum makers out there just don't know of them and uh, I'm sure that you know they're they're making drums and you know doing it their own way and, and I think it's a uh, it's important you know to to keep making them you know even uh, even though you know like it like I was saying it's commercialized and it's on the internet but you know when I, myself you know I got boys you know and you know I, I, I know that they they see it and they you know we talk about it and what goes into it you know I was even explaining to them you know about this uh, the the video we were gonna do you know about the, you know just drum making and stuff and and uh, they kind of they they their little minds understood it a little bit you know about uh, the prayers that go into it and then you know how important it is to our tribe and for our dances you know and. So I, I, I think it's real important to uh, show that to them, you know, so that they can be able to pick it up and be able to uh, learn something, you know, and pass it on and preserve it, you know, within our, our own families and, and our own tribes and our own culture, you know, so that they don't have to get on the internet or, you know, ask somebody for a drum, you know, they could uh, be able to make their own drum, you know, and maybe even help out their friends. And, relatives down the road, you know, and their, their kids, you know, pass it on and, you know, keep it going, keep it alive for us, you know, that's, that's, I'm, what I'm hoping for, you know, you know, why I 
you know, investing my time in it, you know. So that, that kind of brings us full circle back to what I was talking about, the importance and the significance of the drum, and why it is important and how it is used in almost every ceremony, everything that we do as Native Americans and how, how, uh, our cultural continuity, you know, and how we, uh, how we want to kind of keep things going. And do you, uh, do you ever have people that ask you to make a drum for them or anything like that? Or Yeah, I did in the past, you know, but, you know, sometimes things, just, they just don't work out, you know, where, you know, it, it's feasible and, you know, you just don't get around to it or, you know, they don't get the material or one, th one or the other, you know, but uh, not lately. I haven't uh, made any drums for anyone lately. Do you think that uh, kind of in these modern times that a lot of times people want to take the uh, the easy route as far as getting a little bit lazy and not wanting to actually take the time, like you said, to get the material and learn, put the time and effort in to learn how to make one as far as like, you know, I know it takes time and some people don't want to, don't want to take that amount of time to make one, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I, I can't say, you know, anyone in particular, but you know, I, I, I could see that, you know, with, you know, the, the generations, you know, today, uh, it may, uh, you know, seem a lot easier and quicker, you know, just to just to buy one or get get a hold of one somewhere and get around it and sing. But I think, you know, if a person was to make their own drum and then or even all the group members help make a drum, you know, there's a a different feeling that goes along with it, you know, more of a connection with that particular drum and those particular people and the songs that they're gonna sing, you know, because of and like we were talking about the prayer, you know, and then the thought that goes into it, you know, and you know, they being thankful for it and then what it's gonna do for them, you know, in the future. So I, I I could see, you know, a person wanting to take any like you said, we were saying the easy route out, you know, and, and be in a quicker process of just getting the drum and singing, but you know, then to me the person that's gonna take the time and effort to to construct one or put their emotions and feelings into it and and, and then their prayers, you know, and that spirit it's going it to be there for them a little bit more, you know, because of the connection they have with it. And because, you know, uh, being around singing and singing, uh, th to me it's like a, a machine, you know, when everyone's in sync, you know, and those, all the sticks are together on that drum, you know, then it, it uh, to me, it, it unlocks a, a spirit in that drum. And it, it's all a, a connection, you know, with the singers and the drum. And the songs, the feelings they have, and the spirit, and you know, the emotions that they got in their in their songs, and their feelings, and their music. Yeah. So uh, after you make a drum, though, do you get a feeling of accomplishment? Like, sit back and look at what you made, and how does that make you feel? As, as far as a uh, artists like you create something you know from yeah uh to me it, it's a it's a real good feeling a real great feeling a wonderful feeling i guess you would say i mean you know because when you look at look back i guess and you just see the, the raw material there you know and then you can you know you have to visualize it you know as like an artist would and then in the process you know you have a product that you, you know, created and you know it's a, it's a sense of uh you know, full circle, or you know, a, a spiritual feeling, you know, that so that something could come to life, you know, out of materials, you know, and it, it's a real good feeling. I'd say even, even uh, a little bit more on top of that, you know, there's, when you get to sit around it and sing, you know, and, and get that feeling of uh, that spirit that's in that drum, you know, that, that's, I would say, the, the pinnacle of it, you know. Do you guys have any belief as far as 
you know, the sound of the drum makes as far as relating it to, like, say, thunder or the thunder spirits or, like, anything along those lines. Yeah, I've heard some of my older folks refer to it, you know, refer to, like, rolling thunder, you know. I've heard uh, them talk about it, you know, how that deep, that deep bass that it has, you know, like, it, it moves, moves, you know, just like the, you know, like the weather would, you know, or spirits, you know. Yeah, I was wanting to ask you about that, how uh, the power that, you know, the spirit that, that comes out, you know, and like the power that it has. Um, have you ever seen or it's been known to heal people? Have you ever uh, witnessed that or heard of stories about that, how the drum can actually heal people that hears it or around or maybe they touch it and bless themselves with it, you know? I've heard a lot of different stories, you know, I haven't got to see you know, see it, but you know, I've heard different ones come up and tell us, you know, that that it lifted them up, you know, made them feel good, and, you know, made them have a better day than than when they came to the dance or came around the drum. You know. I've heard stories of people that couldn't couldn't walk, you know, get up and dance you know, and walk because of that drum. But you know, I I personally haven't seen that. You know. And I believe I believe in it though, you know, because you know it can uh, it can lift someone up and, and make them feel better, and you know it, it's it's got that living spirit in it, you know, to do that. So, uh, being Native American, do you feel that that the drum is always going to be kind of placed up on a pedestal as far as always going to be there? for the people to use and we're always going to have a lot of respect for it. Do you think that, uh, do you think that it's always going to be that way that, that, uh, we have to, we have to keep it at the forefront of our, uh, the ceremonies and our traditions as far as the continuity of our people? Yeah, I, I think it, you know, it plays a major role in our perseverance as uh, Native Americans. And you know, keeping our culture alive. Um, I'm I'm gonna say, you know, that with all things, that there's gonna be change. You know, that we can't foresee. You know, that you know, our grandparents and great grandparents couldn't foresee. You know, that we definitely don't do how they did. You know, but we we try our best. You know, to to follow. You know, their footsteps. But I believe it's gonna be that same way with our generations after us and grandkids and our children, you know, they're not going to be able to do exactly like us, but they're going to try, you know, their best. And so I do believe there's going to be change with it, you know, but it's just a matter of uh, trying to persevere or, you know, preserve, like, you know, the way we see it, you know, and the respect we have for it, you know, so that they can understand that and, you know, keep it as close as they can to, you know, uh, viewing it like going to church, you know, sitting around that drum, you know respecting it, you know, like, like our grandpa, but I do believe that, you know, no matter what, all things, you know, have change, something we can't, you know, just out of our hands, we might not, might be around to see it, you know, but, you know, maybe our, our kids will, grandkids. So, uh, as far as a, uh, Making drums, do you consider it? Have you ever actually called it an art, as far as like an art form, even though it's, even though uh, you you know how to make them, but do you uh, do you consider it an art form or more or less a uh, just a, a tradition, a family tradition that's been passed down that you're trying to perpetuate and propel, you know? And, allow your kids and children to see it as far as, you know, a, a cultural experience? Well, I mean, I believe it, it could be both, you know. It could be, you know, a piece of art, and then, you know, at the same time, it's a functional piece of art, a traditional functional piece of art that we are trying to preserve. Have you ever seen them used, other, used in other areas than 
say at a ceremony or a powwow or a uh, dance. Event. Yeah, I've, I've seen uh, um, non-native Americans use them as tables, you know, coffee tables or end tables or pieces of furniture, you know, basically. Uh, uh, some of them put them in cases or hang them on walls, you know, more or less just a display, you know. And I, b I believe that they're art, but uh, functional pieces of art, you know, to me, if they're going to be what you would call a spiritual, you know, drum to us as Native Americans, if it's going to have the spirit, then it's going to have to be used, you know, I mean, we don't, to me, don't make a drum to hang on the wall, you know, we don't make one to set our you know, coffee on, and, I mean, it, it, it don't, that's not its purpose, you know. It might be art, and it might be something beautiful to someone without the understanding of it, but to us, you know, it, there's a lot more to it than just putting it on display. You know, it's, it's alive, you know, and you wouldn't want to, you know, your grandpa, he don't want to be put up on the shelf, you know. And way back to our folks, you know, they wouldn't just use it for a, you know, something to, you know, just put on display, you know, it had a, a purpose. Well, I guess I'd like to ask kind of maybe for you to describe kind of the process as far as maybe cutting the, cutting the, uh, cutting the hide or maybe lacing one up or kind of Kind of how does that work as far as the process goes of actually tying one as far as what's that process? Well, no matter, you know, what kind of hide you got, once you get to your rawhide point where you're going to have to soak it in water, you know, and it's going to get uh, pliable to use, you know, because it's going to be start stretching and start, you know, get saturated with water and then you're going to want to start cutting it out, you know, so... Uh, what I used was like a, a pattern, you know, maybe a sheet or a cloth or something to lay over the, the drum to get an idea of how big you wanted your covers to be. And then uh, lay that out and then, you know, kind of just trace it out and cut your circles out of your two pieces. A lot of times, uh, to me, the trickiest part is uh, sometimes we don't get, you know, enough hide. We just get barely enough, you know, and so the hard part is getting the lace out of what's left, having to work your way around that. But once you get all, you know, your your hides cut out, your circles and your lace, and then you're gonna uh, need to put some holes in it. Some people, they cut notches with knives, some, some people will use drill, drill bits and drill, you know, circles in them, and then there's, uh, Hole punches you can use too, leather hole punches. But when, then once you get your holes and uh, your lace ready, then you just you lace it up. Then there's a lot of different ways that people lace their drums. You know, some use a single lace and some crisscross it or double it or you know it's just it just depends on the person. And to me, that that is where it, it becomes more of an art, I guess, because then you can. For a drum maker, then you're gonna see different drums, and you're gonna say, "Wow, this this person makes it like that. This person makes it kind of similar to how I make them, you know." And then there's even different shapes and you know different widths and different just all around different ideals of of how they make a drum. And to me, that then it start to become you know your own art, you know, because you're gonna stand out one way or another based on how you make your drums or how you tie them or how they sound. Or, you know, people are gonna like one more than the other. You know, I guess it. You know, it just does that, uh, different animal hides and different wood make make for a different sound, different tone. Yeah, I would say it definitely does. You know, you're gonna have thicker hides and thinner hides, and people are gonna tie them tighter, or looser. You know, and then and the tighter, the higher the pitch. You know, and the thinner, the higher the pitch, and then. You can have thicker hides and maybe tied not as tight, and they're gonna have deeper pitches. And 
it's going to resonate and vibrate through the wood that's on the inside, depending on what kind of wood it is, you know, and it, whether or not it's going to absorb the vibrations or if it's just going to, you know, be like a baffle, I guess. You know, some people even have air, uh, an air pocket for it to come out. Just depends, you know, how, on, on the drum maker, I guess, and what he's looking for. So once you get a drum tied and and you said the hide was wet, how long do you how long do you have to wait before the the hide before the drum is ready to be used? Well, it it just depends, you know, on dry time. You know, if it's middle of the summer and or springtime, you know, you get put it outside, the sun's gonna dry it pretty quick. You know, I'd say you could have a drum dried out. You know, depending on how thick the hide is, and in one day depending on if the sun was out all day. But, you know, colder conditions, it's going to take longer. And you may not have the luxury of the sun. You know, you may have to dry it with, uh, you know, another process. Heaters or lights or wood stoves or stove, you know. And once it's dried, can you, can you reheat him in order to get that better sound or a higher pitch sound? Or how does that work? Yeah, um... Just about with any drum, it's going to either lo loosen or tighten up, you know, depending on the humidity and the climate. And where, a matter of fact, wherever you are, you know, located, you know, when we've gone out, out west in the dry heat, you know, and they stretch really tight and even crack the hide sometimes because it's so dry out there, you know, and then you, you have to wet it down, you know, it's part of taking care of that hide. And I've heard some people use grease on them, you know, to keep them keep that oil in there, you know, and some people use just just a wet rag or water, you know, it's like, uh, we heard our uh, folks refer to as a giving, giving them a drink, you know, giving grandpa a drink, you know, and kind of looking after, taking care of him, that's what they're talking about, you know, taking care of him. And then been uh, up in uh, Canada, you know, and then it's cold up there, and it uh, damp, you know, and it kind of like loosens it up, you know, the drum's real flimsy and loose, and changes the whole tone and then you know we'll have to use some kind of a heat to tighten it up uh, I've seen a uh, we put it by a fire campfires and it's tightened up or put it by a, they had a blow jar one time and used to tighten it up and so you know just different different ways you know no doubt heat's gonna always tighten your your skin up and then you know the cool weather and more damp areas are gonna loosen it up on you but then you don't want too much heat, you know, because it's going to crack and you know, stretch too much. Is there kind of like a set price, or do you see people selling them, or is there like kind of like a market for them that you've seen? Yeah, I think there's a market for them. <clears throat> uh, you know, it's a, maybe a market you have to go find sometimes, you know. Or, you know, if you have a, a way to, for them to find you, you know, people are, that will find you. And, you know, I think there's a market, you know, maybe not a real big market because there's there's a lot of different drums being made out there. You know, and then uh, a lot of times you'll see different drum makers selling them at powwows. And uh, a lot of people are uh, starting groups up, you know, and looking for drums and wanting to drum or maybe even wanting to sing with their you know, families or their kids, and, which I think is good, you know, so. It's always good to pass along, you know, pass down or traditional ways. So have you ever been asked by a uh, school or a college or anyone to come in and give any uh, demonstrations on how to tie a drum or talk to some school kids or anything like that? Yeah, well, uh, one time we were asked to go up to uh, Lawrence, Kansas at uh, Haskell. Indian Nation University, and we did a demonstration on uh, on uh, drums, talking about tying them, and then just went into them and the process, and then uh, just elaborated a little bit on etiquette, you know, around the drum, and then uh, shared some songs with them, also, and uh, I've done little demonstrations for um, uh, kids' schools, you know, here around. Uh, different areas. Explain uh, 
drum making and its relevance to the history of Native American art? Well, I think uh, drum making it has a real, real important relevance, you know, in, in art history. I just don't, <clears throat> I don't believe, you know, for it being the most important thing, you know, and being what all our ceremonies and uh, dances are centered around, that it, it, it's, it's been recorded. You know, it hasn't really uh, been recorded that I know of. You know, there hasn't been many uh, drum makers that have been noted, I guess, or put down in books and history. And But then, you know, at the same time, maybe, you know, there's a reason for that. You know, maybe they didn't want it commercialized. You know, even though, it, to me, it might already be there, you know, kind of headed in that direction and already a lot of, people are out there making drums and selling them, you know, for the profit, you know, but uh, maybe that's why, you know, the drum makers from in the past who, uh, they might have sold them, but it wasn't all about the profit, you know, it was more about the spirit and, the, you know, the passing on the scene and encouraging, you know, maybe younger singers, you know, because, uh, I had an uncle tell me, you know, when he was, you know, learning to sing, there wasn't a lot of young young people around the drum, mostly older people. So I, I see it being, you know, that uh, maybe some of those drum makers from then, you know, they, they didn't want it commercialized or maybe they didn't want to, you know, get it down in a recording or publicize it too much because they were trying to pass on something, you know, more traditional and spiritual. But, you know, I believe that it's a, real important, you know, functional piece of art, you know, today, you know, it, it's something that, uh, you know, it's, it's a living spirit, you know, and it, uh, it's real powerful, you know, important to our uh, culture and people, you know, so I believe, you know, it has a real importance in art history, it just hasn't been documented that I know of, you know, just, and like like I was saying, maybe there's reasons for that, you know, or you know, perhaps you know, it's it's time that it gets documented. You know. Do you feel that Native Americans in general sometimes don't like the fact that things are commercialized or that they're kind of uh, stolen in a way that they that some people try to copy our ways? Well, <clears throat> I believe that you know. There's more, uh, I guess you would say, traditional, you know, uh, Native Americans or that are, you know, live with more of their uh, cultural upbringing that feel like, you know, they, it's better off keeping it, you know, within their family or to themselves or, you know, hanging on to it so that it doesn't get to, you know, commercialized, you know, perspective or, you know, where just everybody, you know, has a drum or, you know, or maybe even uh, not respecting it, you know, the way that that they were taught, you know, or that, it, you know, passing the drum on, you know, has to have that respect that goes with it. So, yeah, I, I do believe with that in mind, you know, there are different Native Americans that, you know, they want to keep it to themselves, you know, and not share, you know, too much of it. But, you know, and, and along with those thoughts, too, <clears throat> if, you, you know, what if you, to say that they didn't share it with anyone and then they passed on, you know, then then you got uh, a situation where the, it, their, maybe their art form didn't get passed on to their, gener you know, next generation because they were so tight with it. You know? So I guess it could work both ways. You know? Okay, we're here at the home of Ron Rice in Pawnee, Oklahoma. And we have Jason Campos, a Pawnee tribal member, on the left, and uh, Ron Rice on the right. And we're going to tie up a drum using elk hide. We have the, the tops already cut out and placed on there. We have the lace already cut out. And we're going to tie them up.
Actually, we'll, we'll go down and then that one and we'll go up and up so that it has one to catch on. Mm -hmm. So we'll start. Actually, this looks pretty good. How much do you got on it? I'll do the same thing. Probably. If you go anywhere, I'll walk around right here. Right. Okay, so Ron and Jason, we have the drum laced up, sort of like a shoelace. Yeah. 
say Friday on this one. Yeah. Alright. So how do you pull it down? Let's see, follow this all the way back here. Come up this one and then back down through here. We'll go an extra one. Yeah, we can flip it over. It'll be alright. And then we'll, we'll tighten on the other side. Okay. 
this thing go one more. Is that the one that's on? Or what? That's the other one? There's the finished product.